So, um, who's watching the watches, I think, is a, um, a pretty good thing. Without going there in detail, it, it will bring up in your, your mind some events of, of the last few years. So, the New Zealand Privacy Act could, have been, could be said to have started with a bit of a round of raspberries from the media, perhaps even a bit of a whimper. Privacy law, um, to use draw on T.S. Eliot, is turning into a big bang. Even, I would suggest, the 21st century human right. All over the world, as well as in New Zealand, privacy regulators are moving up gears, acquiring new powers, the ability to enforce law and curb bad behaviour, and a new mandate from a public worried by everything from NSA um, to Google um, to data um, analysis. And internationally, we are increasingly working together, as I said. My prediction and that of many others is that we're only a small way up the curve of technology and information century changes. It just keeps growing in size and power. So as a small country and as users, we're going to be generally takers or receivers. You know, we're not, we're not going to be generating this. This is going to come from overseas. All the more important then to be active international participants to have an active domestic regulator and watchdog. The changes to the Privacy Act will hopefully bring some sharp edges such as compulsory breach notification, power to audit, to require compliance. And I hope OPC will um, continue to encourage the growing majority of willing compliance in the regulatory pyramid, but with increased power to hit that, those people at the top, which we currently really don't have. So we need that sharp edge get at those um, unwilling compliers. At this point, a lot of people start talking or thinking about the balance. I've come to the view over the past 10 years that that's a big mistake. I think that it's a dangerous path. What we need is a twin pillars approach. We need both security and privacy in our structures and systems. One without the other is a distorted and shaky structure. The long game is about trust. Privacy is important to people as it ever has been, and perhaps more so because they're refusing to be taken for granted. People need to trust the digital environment and therefore ensure economic growth as well as social cohesion. And they won't do that unless they're sure that their personal information is being properly safeguarded and that that is a regulator there who can help to ensure that. The role of the ISIS to underpin that trust and sustain it. A public belief that wrongs will be righted or that perpetrators will be brought to account is a well known to be essential to the credibility and democratic mandate of governments, not just of the regulators. If we don't recalibrate our approach, civil disobedience along the lines of Anonymous, Snowden and Assange will become increasingly common with no real establishment response to LA citizens' fears that the rebels have a point. I always like to think that Ned Kelly was not very smart because he forgot to protect his legs with his armour, which made him rather vulnerable. But, and he was a thief and a murderer to boot, so not very smart and not very nice. But in spite of that, he became a folk hero because he personified a spirit of freedom and tapped into people's feelings of lack of power and the feeling of injustice being perpetrated. 